All right, I haven't done this since Ride to Hell. I'm excited to see whether it'll work out. It was uh, it was either this or work on something else that requires significantly more effort, but may have been less uh, awkward to set up. This game you're looking at right now is Mystic Heroes, available for the PlayStation 2 and Nintendo GameCube. The PlayStation 2 version is an enhanced port, which means it has some features the GameCube version does not. It has more unlockable characters, different levels, and uh, there's more fog in the PS2 version, but, you know, whatever. Who cares about that? In addition to the PlayStation 2 version being different from the GameCube version, this is actually the third game in a series. And the first two entries were not released in America. The first entry was a strategy RPG, a top-down strategy RPG. The second entry was an action RPG beat-em-up. And this, the third entry, is sort of a Musou game? Sort of. This is one of Koei's earliest attempts to make a, a Musou game that doesn't distinctly feature their Dynasty Warriors or Samurai Warriors franchises. And it shows... Uh, I really like it, though. I think it's different in some really fun and cool ways. We're gonna start a new game. And although I have, uh, I have beaten this game before, and it is possible to inherit stats from a ple previous playthrough, that's not what we'll be doing. We will be using runes that we unlocked on previous playthroughs, though. Uh, runes are items that give you spells when equipped, and that's sort of the main deal in this game, is the spells. Instead of, uh, traditional alternate attacks, like you might find in Dynasty Warriors or Samurai Warriors, you get spells to use. You get direct spells, you get spells you go into first person to target, you get, uh, jumping spells, you get sword spells. It's all about the spells. That's why they're called Mystic Heroes, you see. This, uh, this game's story, translation, and localization is one of the most baffling I've ever experienced. And as a kid, it confused the absolute shit out of me. Because even as a kid, I felt like, hey, this game's starting in a weird place, like it feels like there was more before this I was meant to experience. And there was. Uh, it's sort of weird that they even bothered to translate the cutscenes and get voice actors for them, given that the context of the previous two games is so important. Even though this is the third game in the series chronologically falls after the first two, it's more of a spin-off. And if you don't have any kind of attachment to the characters from the previous two games, then nothing that happens in this story really has any weight or makes any sense. Feel the power. The dragon orb is mine. Rise. Pardon me, taking a took a water break, cleared out some stuff out of my nose. Been been a little sick lately. So the bad guys who were killed are now unkilled and they have the dragon orb, which can do whatever they want. And the dragon orb goes goes so much gooder, it goes bigger and stronger when they feed on the fear of others. So that's basically the entire story of this game, is the bad guys have an orb that gets betterer when they feed on fear. So that's what they're going to do throughout the entire game. Alright, choice of characters. This game actually has two distinct story paths. There's the story path that Shiga and Lani take, and the story path that Tai and Naja take. I'm going to play as Tai just because I like him the most. He has strong magic. And strong hitty, but very slow. But we don't care about him being slow. That's fine.
because Shinben is glowing with power? That must mean... That's right. Naja, what are you doing here? Master Gin told me to research Mount Hoshin. Come on. What is the Da Shinben? Why does it glow with power when Naja's around? Who the fuck knows? Who, who the fuck knows? You might have found out if you played the first two games, though. Alright, it's time to equip our runes. D stands for direct magic, T, target magic, S, spell sword magic, and uh, J for jump magic. And uh, this loadout is less than ideal, so we're going to change that. Going to get a much more agreeable, much more agreeable loadout. Uh, I don't know if pure energy is what we want. Most of these runes are things you definitely are meant to unlock uh, as you play. They're not things you're supposed to start with, but that is irrelevant. Entirely irrelevant. I'm, I'm going to be switching up what attacks we use anyway, so it it should not bother you. Trying to find one with, uh, there. There we go. That looks good. Let's get a good mix in here. The wind snipe is really good. Wait, hold on. No, I want the fireball and the wind snipe. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's that's a really good mix of it, of uh, of spells to use. This is just for variety's sake. There's one spell set I like to use that's optimal, I think. But we're early in the game, so we can fuck around with spell configurations and shit. We're so early in the game that we haven't even started yet. But yeah, if I do ever go silent, please just assume I'm uh, clearing shit out of my, my body that I don't want you to be hearing. The battle begins once again. What battle? What was it like last time? Who the fuck knows? Who are these people? Alright, that's our... That's the wind snipe, our, our targeted spell. And it's a doozy. Uh, it homes in real good. And it deals pretty decent damage. Uh, we, can, we can do normal attacks, of course. Uh, our character fucking leaps if an enemy's too far to hit. So you don't gotta worry about that. If the enemy's too far away to hit, your character will fucking leap toward the nearest fucker to bash. They've got that handled. And uh, our direct attack, I don't want to use just yet because there's not been a great place for it. Fireball's not exactly my favorite direct attack. It's not awful, though. Here. There you go. Yeah, that was a good place to use it. It just sends out three big-ass fireballs and knock over enemies. And that has its utilities, you know? Knocking over enemies uh, right in front of you in a big wave has its, uh, has its functions. But you gotta be pretty close to the enemies because the fireballs have quite a spread. And uh, they spread so much you can easily miss enemies that are further away. And here's our Muso attack. The Muso attacks in this game you use when your spell meter is full. You can get your spell meter full, which is that green meter below our health, by hitting enemies or charging it deliberately. And uh, honestly, uh, getting your spell meter full and using the Muso attack is not a priority ever. It's not really something you want to do. Also, a ton of power-ups. Some of them enemies drop. Some of them you get out of crates and boxes and whatnot. Uh, this is a level where you do have to kill most of the enemies in order to fight the boss. Some of them, that's optional. Like, uh... Like there's plenty of levels where you can just run to the boss or to the end of the level without fighting any of the enemies. But unlike Dynasty Warriors, where that's like a feature, in Mystic Heroes, you definitely get the impression you're supposed to fight the enemies because of the way the levels are laid out most of the time. 
and that like maybe skipping all the enemies was an unintended uh, course of action. Because the enemies are actually kind of threatening in this game. Not yet, because we're in the first level. Uh, but when we get an hour or so in, the enemies start to actually uh, deal decent damage and put up a bit of a fight. It's okay, you've seen our, our target spell attack, this one. You've seen our direct attack, the fireball. And uh, you've seen the muso attack. I don't think you've seen the jump attack yet. Uh, but I don't want to use that on just a single enemy. That would be a waste. Maybe I'll save the jump attack for, like, the boss or something. Uh, there are these jellyfish whose entire function is to stun lock you. So, melee attacks aren't great for them. You really want to use your target spells or direct spells on them. Yeah, you can just pick up permanent upgrades that enemies drop as well. It's kind of a weird way to do leveling up, but it is a Koei beat-em-up. And an old one. This one came out in 2002. This game's fucking ancient. But yeah, Tai, tai is very slow. He makes up for it by hitting so hard, though. His spells deal amazing damage, and uh, his melee is second only to Naja's. And the only trade-off to... Oh, let's use, uh, let's use the jump spell right here. Yeah, that's really good. There's a reason it, uh, it costs so much of your spell uh, meter to use. Uh, one of those plants is attacking us with projectiles, and it's giving us the slow effect. There are, uh, there are a few uh, effects that you can... Uh, be burdened with. They're, none of them are particularly threatening. The good news is that you can also burden the enemies with those same effects, and uh, it's much more threatening for the enemies than it is for you. You can be burdened with a dizzying effect, uh, with a burn effect, with a slow effect, but doing that to the enemies is much better. Like when they're hit with a dizzying effect, they can't really do anything. Same with the slow effect and with the burn effect, you know, more damage is more damage. That's always something good. The entire function of the wolf enemy type we've been fighting, by the way, is that it moves out of the way real good and is kind of hard to hit. It may seem like a bit of a bit of a, a tricky enemy for, like, the first section. It's not like they have a lot of health or deal a lot of damage, but... If you're just starting the game out, it might seem a little excessive that the, that the enemies this early are so good at dodging your attacks. But that's because the tie in nausea path is, uh, is supposed to be the more difficult one. Like, uh, it's sort of like choosing Team Dark in Sonic Adventure 2 or Sonic Heroes. Their path's just a bit more difficult. Like, you don't fight the wolf enemies in these great a number or, uh... This often, if you choose Shiga and Lonnie's path, uh, they, they have some build-up to these enemies. They don't start with the wolves. Shiga's the, uh, also the all-around character. Like, uh, his path, in addition to being the easier path, he's just... He's got decent melee, he's got decent magic, and decent speed. He's just right in the middle. And him being right in the middle goes really well with the, uh, the general difficulty of his path. Alright. We killed most of the enemies in the level. It's time now for the boss. And this boss is actually kind of kind of tough for a first boss if you don't understand the game mechanics and how to uh, best use them. Because he's got a really big reach, this guy. Like a really, really big reach. And it may seem a little excessive at first. How, uh, how, uh, how girthy and domineering this snake is. Like maybe you weren't ready to get dominated by a snake. Just a big old, big old stick. To smack you around with, but 
There are ways to cope. You can juggle enemies with magic. They have no iframes for magic. No matter what, if you're spamming magic, the enemy's going to get hit. This is why magic is a limited resource uh, that you need to refill your spell meter for. Because you can just spam it. And the enemy has no recourse. All they can do is get hit. That's very important for fighting bosses if you want to play what if you want to play that way. Oh, there we go. That boss used to give me so much trouble as a kid. All right. Stage uh well, we're still in stage 1. Stage 2 of stage 1, let's call it. But yeah, uh, that that boss definitely really fucked me up when I was little. I, I've i had this game, or more accurately, I had the GameCube version of this game for a long time. Like, I think it was one of the earliest GameCube games we ever owned. And I played this way before any, uh, any, any proper Musou game. Like, you can see there are some Musou trappings here, but this is this is pretty uh, far removed from a normal Musou experience. Alright, here's the, here's the enemies that uh, Shiga and Lonnie start out with, the soldiers. They do not move around nearly as much as the wolves. They just slowly approach with threatening intent. And I guess they're supposed to be kind of foreboding. They can fuck up your allies, at least. It's a cannon just dropping hot bombs on us. Uh, we can just dot. We can just dodge roll through here. There we go. Uh, the boulders don't deal any damage worth worrying about. Just like the soldiers don't deal any damage worth worrying about. But, uh, they do knock you over a lot, so if that bothers you, then you're not gonna like this level. It does not bother me, because they don't, they don't deal any damage, it's just kinda like, oh, so what, I got knocked over again, who gives a shit? I think the only spell of ours that we haven't looked at yet is the spell sword attack, which is distinct from our Muso attack, even though it's similar. The spell sword attack is just like a way to cleave a path, clear through some enemies. Which is one what one might figure the Muso attack would be for, but it's not. The addition of the Muso attack just seems like something they included because. Like, just because. But I think this game is definitely different enough from the regular Musou formula that I don't know. Even though it's uh, even though it's similar, I feel like people who aren't necessarily into Musou games could still see the appeal. It's not like the purpose of this game is to destroy massive amounts of enemies and gain satisfaction from the destruction of massive amounts of enemies. Uh, the purpose is to complete an adventure. You know, the stages are relatively small compared to Muso stages. There's a smaller number of enemies. The attacks you have uh, aren't as sweeping. They're still pretty sweeping, but, you know. And it's really flashy and cartoony. I think that's a nice, a nice thing. Uh, a lot of people say these characters are super deformed. I really don't think that's the case. Like, maybe standards were different in 2002. But I think for sure these characters are just normal-ass cartoon characters. They don't look, they don't look uh, like their proportions are any different from a cartoon you'd watch on American television, really. Especially in 2002. Uh, this is a level where we don't have to fight all the enemies, if you're curious. I'm just doing that because I want to. I just want to remove all the blue dots. 
Yes, the enemies are the blue dots, and we are the red dots, by the way. I don't really know why that's the case. There might be some narrative or uh, philosophical reason for this that I just haven't thought of. Maybe it's to keep in line with previous games in the series. I don't know. But we are red. The enemy is blue. And that's just something we're going to have to uh, accept. I also can't find a way to alter the uh, the size of the mini-map. That would be a nice function, though. I, we can reach the cannons from here. I'm just trying real hard not to get knocked off the cliff. I mean, it's going to happen at some point during this level, for sure. I just... It's just not fun when it does. You gotta climb all the way back up. I was close. I almost jumped way too early and got fucking destroyed. There we go. I made it. That's a tough jump. There is uh, there is platforming in this game. Believe it or not. Uh, and I mean more than just that. There's like actual platforming levels and stuff in this game. And it's not the worst hell or anything. It's not like it's uh, suffersome, but you do have to get used to the fact that your character jumps really, really high vertically, like this. And their horizontal jump is what you want to use most of the time for platforming. This uh, long forward jump. Yeah, there's a reason the storm spell costs so much of our spell meter. If you're wondering uh, whether the AI deals damage, they do. If you wait long enough and watch them flail on one enemy long enough, the enemy will die eventually. Eventually. Uh... Also, for the longest time, I thought your AI buddies could not actually be removed from combat. I thought they just retreated back to the start and then came back to battle. And they do do that. That is a thing they can do. But it turns out, if they get harassed enough while retreating, they can get knocked out of the fight. I've only seen this happen once, though. So even though they'll constantly be screaming for help and talking about how they're surrounded and, oh god, help me... You don't really gotta if you don't feel like it. It's an entirely optional, uh, optional course to worry about protecting your allies. Even if they're knocked out of the fight, as I understand it, it doesn't really have any negative repercussions except them not being there anymore. It's not like you get an, uh, an uh, immediate game over because they're no longer in the fight. Let's, uh, let's watch Naja attack this cannon. See how long it takes her to destroy the cannon. I'm sure the soldiers can help too. Well, the soldier's gone now, so... I don't think he's gonna be helping anyone walking off the fucking cliff like that. Uh, there are other enemies now, unfortunately. Uh, so I can't solely focus my attention on the cannon. But I am super interested in how long it's going to take her to destroy the cannon. Oh, uh, she... She started getting distracted by the enemies, and I don't want that. I want her to, I want her to destroy the cannon, because I want to see how long it takes. Yeah, fuck up that cannon, you guys. Fuck it up good. Show that cannon what for. Don't worry about uh, literally anything else. I've got... You guys fell off the cliff, huh? You guys, uh... You guys fell off the cliff, huh? Yeah. Why, though? Why and how? Oh, you're done with the cannon, are you? You're just gonna leave it? You're done? You just... <coughs> Pardon me.
when you're sick, you really don't want to be laughing too much. Even though laughter is the, uh, the funnest medicine, it can exacerbate uh, problems with the throat. One moment again. Thing well hydrated. How kind of you to ask. Well, the cannon was near death, it looks like. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that spectacle, that look at the exactly how useless the AI companions are. There's really not much reason to keep them around. Except just to play along. Uh, and that's part of the fun in regular Musou games, is uh, playing along. Like, uh, the AI will be like, oh no, we're getting fucked. Please come help us. And, like, part of the fun is showing up, being the only powerful character, and, uh, and saving the day. You're like a god of destruction. Uh, but in this game, where it's, where there's, like, a more clear-cut adventure-style story... Uh, and the levels are more like traditional video game levels instead of the giant battlefields from Musou games. Uh, the AI being really dumb feels a lot less like you're the force turning the tide of a massive war and more like the other guys on this long adventure with you maybe shouldn't be on the adventure with you. Less a battle where everybody's smashing... Uh, all they've got into each other is what I'm saying. You know, it's not like... It's not like we have an army. The game would be lonelier without the AI buddies, though. I mean, even though they're not great. The fact that there's almost always at least one AI buddy with you, and usually it's your designated story partner does raise the question of why the story mode is not uh, cooperative. There is a co-op game mode. But, like, you, uh, it's limited to levels exclusively made for that mode. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, it's not a, it's not the kind of thing that you, uh, that you played for more than one session. Like, after you finish all five levels in the, uh... In the, uh... In the multiplayer mode, with its distinct level set, you're done. Juggernaut's the only boss that doesn't get a special, really cool intro. Like, he appeared at the cutscene at the beginning of the level and everything. It's just, I, all the other bosses get, like, a cool intro uh, where it draws explicit attention to their name and they do a pose. Uh, but not with Juggernaut, for some reason. Juggernaut doesn't get much. Even though he's definitely one of the more formidable bosses, and I should have been talking about him more. He's one of the bosses that's the hardest to cheese. You can still do it if you understand the game mechanics well enough. I think I knocked that guy off the ledge, which I regret immensely. Some for some reason he's not turning. Okay, now he's turning around. Like I was wondering at what point he would realize that I was following him. But no, uh, we'll see more Juggernauts later, and they are, for certain, one of the more formidable uh, boss characters. And it's, uh... It's kind of important to, uh... To categorize bosses, because there's a lot of them. There are a lot of bosses in this fucking video game. Like, 30 fucking bosses. There's your big bosses. There's your... There's your just... The, the bosses that show up in levels like Mamba and... Juggernaut. 
And then there's the other character bosses, some of which you can unlock as playable characters. They're, uh, they're distinct, and even though there's one or two strategies that work on almost all of them, they all have their nuances. You were definitely intended to uh, learn about their nuances and exploit their nuances in order to uh, come up with the optimal strategy for facing them. And I can appreciate that. The bosses are definitely uh, a big part of the game. They take up a lot of the game time. Uh, there, there's a huge number of them. Some of them probably really frustrated people. I can think of a few bosses that definitely would have bothered players, but I've played the game so long now that I just know how you deal with them. And uh, having the knowledge of how exactly to deal with each boss from years of experience does color my perception a little bit, make everything seem a lot more fair than it probably is. Oh look, just a big clusterfuck enemies right at the end of the level. Isn't that neat? Uh, when Shiga and Lonnie get to this level, there's not a big old clusterfuck of enemies right at the end. You can just walk to the end. It's part of what I mean by, uh... By tying Naja's path being more difficult. Even even uh, when uh, the levels are almost identical to the ones on the other path, they usually get the harder version. I think that's everyone. I don't see any blue dots on the map. We fucking did it. Time to go to the exit. All right, now I'm gonna figure out where my phone is while uh, while this happens. I figured I'd go ahead and start the next level cutscene while you're waiting. I did get my phone, expecting an important call from my doctor. So that needs to be near me at all times, regardless of uh, whether I'm distracting myself at the moment. Uh, this is the Tai Shan, or t I Shan. I'm not sure. Someone tell me how you pronounce it with the apostrophe there. Anyway, this is one of the bosses I could see bothering people. You cannot really approach it. It's, uh, it's made to be really obnoxious to fight with melee. And really easy to fight with, uh, the wind snipe in particular. You can use any target spell to fight this thing, but the wind snipe, as you're seeing, is optimal for this task. You get lots of invincibility frames during your dodges, by the way. Like, lots. But yeah, uh, you can fight this thing with any targeted spell. I just think uh, the wind snipe with how aggressively it homes in is the best choice. Uh, but as a kid, this boss definitely confused me. I was like, why can't I hit this boss with melee? I can't uh, use my jumping spells on it or anything. Uh, sometimes it phases through my body, which is an attack it does deliberately. Like it shoots a phantom of itself through your body. Uh, like it just, it just decides to go through you. And, uh, I think it's a cool and fun boss now. But that's because I know which spell is best for it. Like, if you didn't know to use the wind snipe, I do imagine it might be frustrating. Where 
did that little dragon come from? Where is this floating island? Who is Master Gen? You know, questions you're not going to get the answer to during this video game. Strange rumors that a capital city has fallen. Uh, that's a weird way to put that. Like, uh, like if a, a very important capital city has fallen, would, would you would you call those rumors strange? You might call them grim, uh, concerning, frightening, but strange. That's not necessarily strange. Anyway, we're going to Koke, which is a capital city uh, that you presumably would know more about if you had played the previous two games. But that I know nothing about. Alright, let's see if we can't get ourselves a... a new jump spell that's not garbage... Tornado's not a great jump spell, but it's not the worst. Uh, sure. Sure, this is fine. Defeat the Bruin. Uh, I'm not sure if that's how you say that. Uh, forgive me if it isn't, but... Our new target spell just summons lightning directly on enemies. Uh, it's very effective. The only problem with it is that it doesn't home. Uh, like, it doesn't follow the enemy. We can also just rain lightning from the sky, like this, aggressively. And it just fucks everybody up. And that's my favorite direct spell, definitely. Is just being able to rain thunder like this and destroy everyone. And, uh, we got a new jump spell. What was it? I think we equipped Tornado. Uh, one moment. Leave our, uh, that's the wrong button. I believe our new jump spell is Tornado. All of the wind attacks are focused on dispersing enemies. Tornado being no exception. It does daze them after they're uh, knocked into the air and back down. Which makes them really incapable of retaliating in any meaningful fashion. Which I like. A lot. Uh, if you're more curious about things surrounding this game... Uh, the game previous to this one was planned to be localized, it seems like. Like, they had a working American title for it. And it just never happened. And I'm not really sure why, but, but I wish it was translated, because then it would make understanding this game's story a lot easier. A lot easier. Uh, opinions of this game seem generally low. Like, people just don't seem to like this game much. And not many people have played it either. Like, this game sold exceptionally poorly. It was the third entry and a spin-off in a series that hardly received uh, critical or consumer attention. Even, even before it turned itself into a, a sort of Muso game. So, when it did turn itself into a sort of Muso game, I can... I can see how that might not contribute too much to its popularity. 
like I've been saying, I like this game a lot, but uh, it's not hard to see why maybe it didn't sell the best and why people weren't super interested in it. Like, I think it sold less than 100,000 units even combined on the PS2 and GameCube. That's, uh, that's really bad. Those are really bad numbers. The PS2 release, which had, a uh, a lot of enhancements, only came out a few months after the GameCube version, and I wonder if that might have affected sales as well. No matter what, I can't imagine this game was ever going to sell well. Certainly not. But I wonder if that might have had something to do with it. Oh, that's one of our guys. Sorry, it is a little it is a little dark in here. Look, it's dark on my TV than it is on the game capture. I just looked over at the game capture while I said it's a little dark in here, and it's not really all that dark on the game capture. Just trust that it's darker on my TV, okay? The TV has uh, less than optimal settings right now because I was watching movies with it. It says 100 KOs. We're definitely killing these guys, though. That's a thing in regular Dynasty Warriors 2, though, I guess, isn't it? Is that you're definitely killing guys, but it says KOs instead. No, I want to go help Naja because even though there's no incentive to do it, I want I want to do it because because I feel like it. There we go. I'm helping. Uh, when your magic knocks over your allies, it does not hurt them, by the way. If it did, that would be a disaster. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just trying not to cough into the microphone. Look, it's, e it's either I was going to sit around all day uh, miserable, or I was going to do something. This might as well be the something, right? No matter how much my body disagrees. Like, if I can't even sit around sharing video games anymore, when it, who am I even? No matter how much uh, my body tries to fight me. It was nice to have a break from the wolves. They they would be a very exhausting enemy if you fought them every level all the time. Especially if you're playing as Ty. Because he's, he's a little slow. I fell in the pit. Which has triggered the boss fight. Let me tell you about Bruin. Uh, Bruin has a charge attack that he can use that makes him completely invulnerable. Uh, not just invulnerable to your melee, like most, uh, most things, but invulnerable to your magic. Which is nuts. And that's his thing. That's his special thing. This charge right here. The one where he glows blue. And that, yeah, that's a little nuts to me. But everybody needs one thing, you know? You can't just be the only boss without a cool thing. He's definitely the easiest boss character to fight. Because aside from that charge, when he becomes invulnerable, he's always open. <laughs> uh, the camera was not doing a great job right there. That's okay. Not dying, you were dying. 
I'm fine. Alright, here's a more traditional Muso map. Like, for sure, this is more what you might expect when you hear of a game similar to Muso. Made by Koei. Big map. Uh, some enemies to fight while you work toward the other end of the map. Not as interesting as a Dynasty Warriors map. Not as large as a Dynasty Warriors map. But similar. Similar. This game uh, gets called like a kid's version of Dynasty Warriors a lot. I don't think that's fair, because Dynasty Warriors is a significantly easier game than, uh, than Mystic Heroes. Assuming you're playing on normal difficulty on both, the normal difficulty in Mystic Heroes is definitely harder than the normal difficulty in Dynasty Warriors. Mostly because the bosses, but there's just, like, more nuance to the combat to worry about than in early Dynasty Warriors games that came out around this time. That reminds me, uh, when this game came out, uh, people were already calling Dynasty Warriors long in the tooth, even though it, it came out in the year 2000. Like, this game came out in 2002. The, uh, the first Dynasty Warriors that was a beat-em-up came out in the year 2000. It seems a little disingenuous to call it long in the tooth after it's only been two years. And I think, uh, I think the Dynasty Warriors games are great. I love Muso games, that's not a secret. Uh, this game certainly does not feel the same itch, uh, feel. I meant feed. Scratch? Scratch the same itch. It's time to fight Onyx. One of my more favorite boss enemy types. He can create an energy pyramid around himself to defend himself from melee attacks. He'll just pick up a big rock and throw it at you sometimes. He has big sweeping attacks. Here's his energy pyramid that he uses to protect himself. It also inflicts slow uh, to make melee combat just not really uh, viable near him if he uses that on you. Uh, he throws a big rock. He can belly flop at you. He's like the first boss, aside from, uh, aside from Juggernaut, I think, uh, where you have to, uh, be careful about your approach, but like all bosses, like all of them, if you use magic and just keep spamming it, there ain't shit he can do about it. He has no defense. Also, he does one final attack before he dies. No matter what, even if his health is well below zero, he will get up and do one last attack before dying. Uh, I think that's cool. Adds a lot of personality to that particular boss that he does that. If you're wondering how long we're gonna be playing, uh, I hope to reach the end, but, uh, if the, uh, if the controller battery runs out before the end, I don't really have a long cord to charge with. Let's see how bad the Muso attack is. Uh, it's not great. Killed a few guys, but just using my, uh, my spells would probably have been a little faster and less cumbersome. It does take uh, the control out of your hands and make you invincible, though. So, like, if you just don't feel like dealing with being in the middle of a bunch of fucking enemies, it, it can help you with that. If the controller battery gets, uh, gets run all the way down before we reach the end, then I'll uh, just have to resume this later. Which isn't ideal, but also isn't awful. There are worse things. This controller is old. 
and only gets holding charge the way it's quite the way, quite the way it used to. Yeah, I know your unit's surrounded. It never isn't. I'll just rain down thunder from the skies at it. That'll stop it. There's only a couple one-liners in this game, and they get repeated a lot. Uh, personally, I think Shiga and Lonnie have the most irritating one-liners, but Naja's not far behind. Because we're playing with Naja, we do have to put up with her one-liners. Playing alongside Naja, I should say, not not playing as them necessarily or with them necessarily. From what I understood it from the original, Naja's a uh, a boy character in a uh, woman's body. This is not a this is not a statement of uh, political intent or anything. I'm just saying that I think that was the general conceit behind her character in the original Japanese release. No reference to that made in the American localization, but it's not like it matters because that fact doesn't come up. You don't really learn anything about the characters in this game. Uh, I feel like the story of the game must have been completed uh, in the first two, and then the third one came around, and they're like, uh, we don't really have any plans, so this one's just gonna be a Musou game. Well, not like I like I've said, it's not really a traditional Muso game, but this is similar to things they know how to do already, and were successful. This one's much more action oriented than the other two. Even though the other one was an action RPG, I've seen I've seen footage, and it's not this actiony. Like this one's mostly an action game, while the other one was at least a little bit more RPG than this. There are RPG mechanics here. You know, there are runes to equip and unlock. You can level up your spells by using them often enough. But there's, uh... There's upgrades you get from pots and shit. But it's mostly an action game, that's for sure. Like, the RPG mechanics aren't really important to what's going on. I said the RPG mechanics, right? Because that's what I meant to say if I said anything else. I do think it's a little weird that in Onyx's first appearance you're already supposed to fight two of him. And he only gets the introduction the first time. Uh, like, you do fight some repeating bosses in this game, for sure. There's a, there's a lot of that, but... Usually in the first level where a boss appears, they're supposed to be kind of a big deal. You don't, you don't fight two of them right away, but you do with Onyx. I guess because they couldn't think of a more suitable boss for the end-of-level confrontation. We did it! All the enemies are dead. That was a fun level. Big old temple level. Bunch of enemies waiting at the top. Bosses too. And uh, on the Shiga and Lonnie path, instead of there being our uh, four counterpart evil mystics uh, up at the top, there's a rock. And I don't mean the boulder kind of rock. I mean the mythological giant bird kind of rock. R-O-C, that rock. And I think the rock's a more interesting boss fight for this. 
But there's a reason that uh, it couldn't be the boss fight for the Tai and Naja path, because uh, it's kind of important to the uh, the Shiga and Lani pathway story. So there's no uh, there's no benefit to having it appear again. The rock also has a lot of health. Like, a lot, a lot of health. Uh, something else that appears exclusively on the Shiga and Lani path. A fucking dragon. You know, after this level, let's... I think we're at the... Uh, my nose is destroyed. After this level, I think we're gonna... Uh, we're gonna take a look at that dragon boss, actually, because we won't see it on the Tai path, which is not great. I kind of want you to see that. Because that boss is... It's something. Uh, like, as a child, that boss was... That boss was unbelievable. And I think for 2002, it was a pretty... A pretty threatening and, uh... And, uh... Massive, uh... Creature to have rendered as a boss battle. Like, it's rendered in such a way that you can see how they did it without, uh... Spending too much resources... Sorry, we gotta watch the dramatic introduction of the two bosses for this, uh, this level. Who are Karas and Kresh? You'll never find out. Presumably they were important in the last game. You won't know. You can't know. There's no dialogue between them. They don't say a word the entire game. You want to look up some things about them? Be, be my guest. You can try. I know they're part of a group of evil mystics that were uh, that were created to thwart uh, the four main characters, Tai, Naja, uh, Shiga, and Lani. But I know they all have K names with five letters each. That's cute. But aside from that, who fucking knows? Like, it's, like, any context that would lead you to understand who they are, what they're doing here, why they're doing it, is missing. Uh, the only thing you know for sure that the bad guys are doing is putting fear into the orb. That's, like, the only, uh, the only goal that's made clear throughout the entire game. And it's a lazy goal. Like, it's just a reason to go to as many different locations as possible. The goal is so genericized and, uh, and non-specific that the bad guys could really do anything, even vaguely evil. Uh, and it's it fits with the story. You know? There's a way to get a good infinite combo going, by the way. If you can tap circle at just the right rhythm. Uh, those guys appear to be stuck inside the wall, which I don't like. There we go. There were a lot of them in that wall, wow. And one of the bosses just sort of came down here to say hello. Even though I wasn't ready to fight yet. I want to say stuff about Karas and Kresh, but... Like, uh, Karas does a lot of backflips, and is really hard to hit with melee, and, uh, one moment. Say, Karas does a lot of backflips. It is really hard to hit with melee. But spamming magic at him works just fine. 
He has a lot of aerial attacks. Like he likes to jump in the air and use magic at you, but if you're good enough distance and are spamming magic, still not an issue. Uh, Kresh? I really don't understand Kresh's deal. He has a few leaping attacks where he jumps down and uh, leaves shockwaves behind. He's just as vulnerable to magic. All bosses are vulnerable to magic. They have no defense against it. No uh, worthwhile long-term defense, at least. And it looks like we may have to kill them before we clear out all the enemies, even though I don't want to do that. They're kind of, kind of taking the fight to us. So... Looks like that might be how things go. My controller vibrated pretty hard when Crash hit the ground. Just gonna... Just gonna spin at him. And eventually he'll fall over. There is a way to get them stun locked uh, with your spin attack. If you back them up against the wall first. We may be outmatched. Well, uh, we had to fight the bosses before the rest of the enemies, which wasn't what I wanted to do. The rest of them got away. The shadow seems to be lifting. Maybe things aren't so bad after all. What are you guys doing here? We should ask you the same thing. <laughs> Something up? Actually, there is. Enemy forces appear at the Kaihe Pass. Tai and Naja receive uh, a call to arms. Destination <coughs> Kaihe Pass. Excuse me. We've met Raja. Uh, you want to know who Raja is? You want to find out what's up with him? You're not gonna. Sorry. Let's uh, let's save. Save right here. All right, now let's uh let's go look at no, I don't want to start the battle. Uh let's go look at uh Mystic Hero at the dragon boss from Sheikah's path. Yeah, like he's he's the all-around character. He has decent power and magic and speed. He's not quite as good as uh as Tai in the magic department. And Ty's melee attacks do hit stronger. That's, uh, I've, I've done some experiments. I'll handle this. All right, uh, I think it's stage two, three. Yeah, that's the one. I mean, there's like no reason to use a, sp a particular set of spells for this that I can think of. Uh, maybe if we can get a, a lightning up at the top. The, yeah, bolt, that's what I meant. All right, here we go. This huge fucking dragon. You know? This thing is massive. And it dives right the fuck at you. And that scared the shit out of me as a kid. After making like the most terrifying scream. Like, why does it scream like that? I, I, uh, I was not doing good on my dodge.
That's our spell sword. It's green. We can't use our target spell to attack him right now because our target spell is pretty bad, and I should have thought about that. If we use our spell sword, we become invulnerable and can interrupt his charge at us. It's a pretty quick boss. But holy shit, did it scare me to death when I was a kid. That scream it makes before charging is frightening. Oh, no, we don't want to watch the cutscene. Thanks, though. Uh, thanks. I'm good. We weren't here to watch the cutscene or, or play the entire rest of the game from there. But it's nice that they offered. We were, uh... We were in the middle of a, of another, of another activity. See, that's the most you get about the characters. Griffin is a man who has sworn undying allegiance to Emperor King and has all the skill. And that's the most you really get, you know? Like, you want to know more about him? You can't. You really can't. Another big battlefield. This one is uh, a bit more going on. A lot more hazards and stuff. Things worth caring about. Not too late. Die, look, the previous there. battlefield level was not nearly as interesting. Griffin, your, time your time is long past. Sounds like something that maybe might have some weight behind it. If we were here for the previous games. Like, if I knew anything about the previous games, I might care uh, that Ty said that. It might seem like something's going on. Uh, that that jump spell we just did where we crashed into the ground and shot glaciers everywhere. Uh, I think the best jump spell in the game. It goes for ages. It deals so much damage. It pretty much is guaranteed to kill these guys. Uh, the second you have the ability to equip this spell, it is a good idea. It does take a lot of magic. We have infinite magic right now, but normally it takes a lot of magic to use. But as you're seeing, it just annihilates. It just cleans up. And then after you're done, you gotta hit guys a bunch to get your magic pack, but, you know, after everyone you've killed, it, it makes sense to have to do some sort of labor. Like, you can't just shoot the giant ice crystals all the time. You gotta, you gotta work some time. I think the Glacier Freeze takes up the most uh, energy. Uh, maybe Hellfire takes more. I thought maybe Glacier Freeze took the most to use, but I think Hellfire might take a bit more. We're not going to use Hellfire, though. I don't want to. And also, I'm not sure it's possible on the PS2 version. Now that I think about it, I think they changed how spells work on the PS2 version so that... Uh, Hellfire can only be uh, used by Nadja uh, because fire is her explicit element. Uh, Ty's explicit element is lightning, and Sheikah's element is wind, and Lonnie's element is uh, is ice. And I think Hellfire can only be learned by uh, by Nadja in the PS2 release for some reason. 
maybe to encourage you to use the characters with the element that they have affinity for. But, I don't know, mixing and matching is like the fun part of using, using the spells. So I'm not sure why you'd want to discourage that. Uh, what level is this? 3-1? There's eight stages in the game. We're on the third one right now. It's not a long game. It is taking significantly longer because we're fighting all the enemies. Definitely not something you have to do. Archer's always there just to be annoying in Musou games. That's what they're for. They're just there to be completely accurate all of the time and really irritating. They don't deal enough damage to be afraid of or anything. They're just obnoxious. To manually charge your, uh, your spell gauge, by the way, you hold block and then press square. Manually charging takes a lot longer than refilling magic by attacking. There's something we're going to have to do. Uh, not, not necessarily in this setting, but there are some settings where... In this game where that's going to be a necessity. I say it's not a long game. It's like uh, two hours if you run past the enemies. It's like three, three and a half if you fight all the enemies. We're not going to fight all the enemies in every stage or anything, but we're fighting all the enemies right now because I want to. Because I'm having a good time doing it. Look at me, I'm fast for once. You also cast spells faster when you have the speed up. That, uh, that was a waste of that spell. I was trying to line them up better than that. So they got hit more directly with it. But the AI, uh, our AI buddies were in the way. I picked up a rune that I could have sworn I already collected, but more runes is more runes. I, I can see a, a utility in being able to just like manually choose, hey, I want this enemy frozen. I can see why someone might want that. Yeah, see, just, I don't feel like dealing with the archer or freezing. Really, uh... As soon as I figured out how useful the Glacier spell was, I was, uh, when I was playing this when I was younger, I was done with all the other spells, basically. I would just use the Glacier spell on everything. The other spells have their purposes, it's just... The Glacier spell fucks them up so good. The original plan was for this to be a live stream, because now that I have my powerful computer from, uh, from Florida... Uh, the sirens. You just get used to that. Uh, now that I have my powerful computer from Florida, it was definitely, definitely the plan to stream because I had a much easier way to do that. Stronger computer that could handle streaming better. Uh, internet's better here. But uh, with me being sick. And uh, waiting on a call from my doctor. A call for something different than these uh, nose problems, by the way. These nose problems, they're probably going to clear up on their own. That's not, a, that's not a concern of mine. Oh, 
Something uh, completely different from that. And I could spend all day, you know, moping about how I have a medical condition bad enough where I need to sit around waiting on a call from a doctor to figure out how I can afford the tests I need to figure out what's wrong with me. Or I could play Mystic Heroes and record that for people. Oh, I thought they didn't get one of these text intros. I was wrong. They do get a big text intro. I thought for sure they never would. Oh boy, two of these guys, huh? Just like everyone else, you can back them up against a wall. Uh, it's just kind of hard, but it's doable. Uh, I failed this one, though. Uh, it, for what it's worth, with Ty, if you just want to use the spin attack, which you do by rotating and pressing attack, and nothing but the spin attack, it's very hard for enemies to get through your invincibility frames. Like, regardless of whether they're backed against the wall, it's a good way to avoid getting hit. That's one of them. That tornado kick fucks me up. Ah, oh, god, I hate when they dive underground immediately after resurfacing. Like, I think you're supposed to wait a bit longer, so that way they do an attack that, uh, that makes them more vulnerable than that. But it, it's just... I'm not that patient. Strategic, huh? Keep in mind this is a strategic battle. I will be using nothing but all of the strategy. I know it's just labeled that because it's dramatic. Asking myself uh, the question whether this is the level where I want to give up on fighting all the enemies or not. It seems a little early to give up on fighting the enemies, but mm, do I want to keep at it? Or do I want to go fight Griffin? If this were a if this were a live stream as planned, maybe I could ask you which of these things I should do. But now it's just live commentary instead of a live stream. You can tell it's live commentary because uh, I say pardon me and pause and also uh, and also talk like it's live. Uh, well, my brain just rerouted itself and I started walking toward the end of the level. So I guess that's what we're doing is going toward the end of the level and fighting Griffin. Doesn't mean I won't kill some enemies along the way but it looks like my brain has made my decision for me. Like, I think fighting all the enemies is fun and can be uh, enjoyable in its own place. It's just maybe I, you know, I, I'm just going to fight as many as I feel like, and then I'm going to fight uh, the boss. And Ooh, infinite magic, hell yes! gonna spam the glacier everywhere now I, I, if I can man this 15 seconds of infinite magic didn't get as much use as I was hoping mostly because of the archers they're just there to be irritating don't really uh, deal any damage or present any kind of danger
I don't have enough magic for the glacier. Now do I? So I really want to use it on this giant group of enemies that's fucking me up. There we go. That was fun. Look at all the look at all the power-ups they drop for me also. Oh, infinite magic? This time I've learned my lesson, I'm just gonna cast infinite lightning instead. Maybe one glacier? No, I couldn't even cast the one glacier because, uh. Because the archers, again. You know, it's just. It's good to be able to decide for yourself. Do, do I feel like fighting all these enemies? Is that what I'm gonna do? This was already recorded for the Long Play Archive, by the way. It's not up on the Long Play Archive channel yet, but I already, I already did this one recently, in fact, very recently. Uh, here's Bruin. He's back. This time as a regular enemy instead of as a boss. A thing that video games do that I tend to like. I like when video games do that. I think it's cool. The game's like, look how far you've come, and if you haven't come that far, how did you get here? Yep. Kind of cool. All right, near really near Griffin now. I think I'm going to show you the Shiga version of this stage too because there's a boss in this stage in particular that's really cool. Let's maybe get my spell meter up a little higher. Alright, Griffin's pretty, uh, pretty formidable. He has a lot of fuck-off attacks, this guy. If I could find him, though, that'd be great. I want to know where he is, at least. Oh, I am in the middle of some shit. This actually isn't all that bad a situation to be in. I just want to get some distance. The archers are really fucking me up. I want to get some distance. And get it in such a way that I can do this, please. No, I was so close. If I could... No, please. I just... There are better things I could be doing than trying to use the Glacier Freeze move. I just like seeing the enemies go flying. There we go, I did it. Look at all those hits. Look at all those power-ups. That's why I wanted to use Glacier Freeze. It's because of how satisfying it is to kill so many enemies and collect so many power-ups immediately after. All right, now where's Griffin? I'm going to whack him with my new power-ups I just got. Uh, well, Muso attack. I was I was hoping to aim for Griffin and not the harmless... Uh, the harmless shit enemies, but... Yeah, that made that a lot easier. There were better ways I could have done it than that. Uh, but getting all those power-ups definitely made this fight a lot easier. Like, he's almost dead already. Also, just like everyone else, of course, he doesn't have any defense against being blasted with direct magic. There we go, I got him. A worthy opponent. You will darken further. Submit. Ah. Alright, so that battle's over. Griffin teleported away, I guess. And there's a tiny master Gen talking to us. Time. Naja. Master Gen. Kang is using the fabled dragon orb. He is trying to fill the orb with power. If it becomes... Horrible things will follow. Things will follow. You... Oh, you have no idea how horrible exactly. Horrible things will follow. 
I just didn't expect the horrible things to come in the in the fashion that they do. Ripples from the power of the dragon orb. Following the ripples, Ty's party aims for the capital. Destination, City of Ancients. From what I understand, based on the previous games, which isn't a lot, uh, we're moving some pretty big distances between these levels. Oh wait, I said I wanted to show you the, uh, Mystic Hero. uh I wanted to show you the, uh, what that level looked like for Shiga and Lonnie's team, I think. Stage 3-2, right? Yeah, there we go. I like that it tells you if you missed any runes. That's kind of nice. Uh, why not? Let's go with the default spell setup. And this time we're not even going to bother fighting, uh, fighting the enemies. Not even a little. I'm just gonna go see the really cool boss I like. Because you only see it here. Just like the dragon you only see in that, uh, that one fight. There are more opportunities to see the rock, though. Look! It's a giant fiddler crab. And it's like a really cool machine thing. I love this boss. It's got a lot of cool moves. Uh, it's very agile. It moves around all over the place. You never really fight anything quite like this elsewhere in the game. Like, it shoots bubbles, it's got eye lasers. And then it has a completely different phase where it summons these bells that do magic at you. Uh, at this time, instead of doing the magic thing, they're spinning at me like a bunch of blades. But we can dodge roll out of the way of that. The crab itself should be back. There it is. Yeah, it, sh it shoots these bubbles, which I believe slow us down, from what I remember. And the bells are back. Are they no, they're doing the blade thing again instead of magic, but it's fine. key to solving this boss, though, is just to be really aggressive with it. Like, if you're super on top of it, it can't really use any of its projectile attacks in any meaningful way. It's just such a cool design for a boss. I think I got it, though. Yeah, I defeated it. Anyway, yeah, that's a, that's a cool boss design. You should only see on the Shiga and Lonnie path. No, it's okay. I don't want to watch the cutscenes. I don't feel like it. Mystic Hero. Uh, continue. Uh, uh oh, I haven't saved since stage three one. Uh, good thing we have a level select. <laughs> Back to using Ty. I didn't realize we hadn't saved since stage 3-1. I don't think I'm going to get any uh, bonuses for clearing the story if I do it from free mode, but uh, that's not super important, right? Stop that.
Wait, can I save over an existing uh, slot with a free mode save? Will my, will my time be null? No, it just sets the playtime to zero. Uh, it gives you a score based on on how long it takes you to clear a story, so I don't see why it would let you save and keep your playtime from free mode. That's bizarre to me. Uh, free mode is also unique to the PS2 version, by the way, hey. for some reason. Ty and Naja, why are you here? Master Gin told us to follow you here. What the? I wonder what that little dragon wants. We just came from Mount Hoshi. We meant to lose it, but it. I am staying hydrated. Forget about it. Let's go. Are you? Staying hydrated? Huh? Alright. Uh, this level's a maze, actually. And I know the way. Hold on. It may look like there's a lot of ways to the exit. But there's actually only one. Uh, and the trick they pull is that some of the pathways will fall. And there's no way to know which pathways will fall uh, before you walk across them. But if you were uh, a, cyni a cynical individual, uh, that pathway fell without me touching it. And I'm not sure why. If you were a cynical individual, you could map out like the least uh, the least convenient workable route. And if you if you take the least convenient workable route, you will never run into any of the falling pathways. That's what we're taking right now. We made it. That was quick. Let's go. That's a uh, lingering on that shot a while, aren't we? All right in we go into the castle itself. So uh, when I was a kid and got to this set of levels, I thought, oh, I must be near the end of the game because there's Emperor King and Shiva and we're going to fight. You do fight one of them in this castle. I was inspired to... Uh, to uh, record. Damn it, no, I didn't want to use my Muso attack. I mean, it's not like it doesn't look cool and stuff, and I got a couple of KOs up out, out of it, but that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to use the Glacier. Because uh, these enemies don't get knocked back by, uh, by your melee attacks at all. I would like to use Glacier now. There we go. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We got we got 15 kills out of that. Bunch of power-ups dropped. Glacier is just such a good spell. And, uh... By my boyfriend, uh, Mint Essence. Like, uh... Like, yesterday I was really agonizing about my health, because things aren't good, uh, health-wise for me. They're actually pretty, pretty, uh, grim-looking, you could say. Because even though, uh, they have not been able to find out what's wrong yet, in spite of it having been a very long time, uh, the symptoms are looking pretty bad. Like, these aren't the kind of symptoms you get if your, uh, if your body's... Functioning uh, like it tends to function in people uh, that that live for a long time is all I'm saying, and it could it could just be uh, something I ha I haven't thought of or that the doctors haven't thought of that that turns out to be not nearly as bad as what it could be, and that's fine if it is those things. I'm not gonna be upset if I don't have a super deadly illness. I don't want one of those. I just started getting my life together. 
I would, so I would actually prefer if I could be alive for a while. But yeah, I was super agonizing about the pain I was experiencing and the symptoms getting worse and and uh, how long it's taken to get the tests because I don't have uh, I don't have the money I need and all of that stuff sucks and wasn't fun. And then my my uh, my my uh, my boyfriend was like, uh, I keep using the wrong attack. I really don't mean to use the spell sword. And then my boyfriend saw that uh, that video I uploaded yesterday called Spin to Win, which is from this game. Showing that if you back enemies into a corner and use the spin attack, you, uh, you win. That's the meta. It's the meta in this game. And, uh, I thought it was kind of a, kind of a fun video a little bit shit posty but i like cheese and i like showing people how to cheese things my boyfriend mint essence is his name uh saw that video and was like uh it's really good to see that you're still making things even with your situation it shows how strong you are and i was thinking about ways to respond to it i was like i could respond and be like no i'm not strong it was just a it was just a quick shit posty video or I could be, you know, there were a lot of ways to downplay what he, I, I used that in the wrong direction entirely. I was, I wanted to use that forward. There were a lot of ways I could have downplayed his praise. And I seriously considered it, because I didn't feel like I deserved it or anything. I want the power-ups. Oh, that's a lot of enemies. I got a little too greedy. It's, uh... Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Mm, look at all those delicious power-ups. Uh, yeah, there were a ton of ways I could have downplayed what he said. Made it made it seem like what I was doing didn't matter. But, you know, it does. I was really, really scared yesterday. Like, cripplingly scared. I, w I couldn't get anything done. I was super worried about my health. And I didn't have a lot of options for taking care of my health, either. So, oh, by the way, some of the floors fall here. Uh, I just memorized which ones fall, so that way I won't uh, I won't run into that problem. This room where you fight this boss, the Brute. The Brute's probably the boss that reappears the most in the game, but he uh, has a big old sword and a lot of uh, a lot of really sweeping melee attacks to use against you. And later in the game, uh, he comes in two varieties. But th this one is the uh, the standard variety. Uh, he's weak to both melee and uh, magic. And he's in a room where the floor is lava. It's purple lava, but it's still lava. And the only way to avoid getting hurt by the purple lava is to not stand on it, or to just repeatedly use the spinning attack and hope you don't get interrupted. Uh, which, which works a lot of the time. It's working right now, as you're seeing. Uh, we're, we're using the meta to excellent effect in this particular room. Uh, this is the optimal situation for the meta. And I imagine how most speedruns of this game must go. Unless somebody found a spell that kills uh, everything even even uh, uh, more effortless, effortlessly. But yeah, I was a mess yesterday. I was not in a position to be uploading a video uh, or even editing that video to upload it. Ugh, oh, God, my nose. But I did anyway. And sh and you know what? I do deserve uh, for him to tell me I did a good job. And, and that that makes me strong. Because I certainly wasn't in the mood for it. I was, like, experiencing existential dread. My whole body was tingling. I was shaking in fear. Uh, I still uploaded the video anyway. Who is Cyrus? Uh, why? When did Emperor King and Shiva have him? What is his relation to them? Uh, as more than just a son? Take this child to Mount I... and what is Cyrus's history with the Mystic Heroes? A I hope you don't want any of these questions answered either. I know Cyrus appears in the second game, though. I know that much.
And uh, it's because of that praise from him where he was like, you know, what you did was strong, uh, uploading a video when you were so scared. Uh, it's because of that that I'm doing this right now. I definitely would not be doing anything if he didn't say that. I, I would just be like lying in the in the living room, uh, watching videos, trying not to think about all the things wrong with my body. Instead, I'm doing something uh, productive, bringing joy and entertainment to people. Or maybe not joy, but at least entertainment. There seem to be quite a few people that really enjoy my videos. It's not like I'm popular or anything. That doesn't matter. People like this. People like watching me play this. Oh, play games like this. I guess that's the rune uh, that was hiding in this level. I never would have found it if I didn't get knocked in that pit. I don't think I'm ever going to find all the runes. Like, I don't think I'm ever going to go through the game. And I keep walking down the hole. I keep expecting that gap to be small enough for me to just uh, just walk through it. I'm actually going to have to kill these ghosts because they're becoming too much of a nuisance. No, I didn't mean to do that kind of jump. This is a <laughs> disaster. Normally I just jump across those with no problem, no effort required. This was actually a really good game to pick for live commentary because I've played it so much. If you're playing a game for the first time, playing it live is a really bad idea. Playing most games live is a really bad idea because it takes so much effort to talk and play a game at the same time. Especially any game you need to actually pay attention to. It takes a lot of effort to pay attention to people's reactions if you're live streaming. Like, playing games live is hard. It's hard shit. You're worse at every game while you're playing it live. That setting just adds a lot of additional stress and a lot of additional confusion to your poor stupid brain. Not your stupid brain in particular, but in general, human brain. Stupid. This is what I was talking about, about there being a platforming level in the game, by the way. This one is what I meant. It's not a great level. I got, I'm used to it now. I've played it enough that I'm not upset at this level's existence or anything. It's just not necessarily what you want to see in a game where the jumping looks like this. But I did it. Don't get me wrong, the hazard is designed around the fact that the jumping is so janky. But that, that doesn't mean I have to like it. Like, it's not a bad hazard. It's not a bad level. That doesn't mean I have to, uh, I have to enjoy it, though. But yeah, thank, uh, thank you, Mint Essence, for uh, inspiring me to actually do something today as opposed to just, uh, just feel awful all day. Because even though I still feel bad, and I'm still waiting on that call, uh, I feel significantly less bad th that I'm doing something productive with my time. Alright, uh, this part of the fight, you basically just want to wait for her to finish doing this. She'll get done eventually. She'll, she'll get tired of shooting homing shockwaves at you. And then she'll come at you directly instead of just shooting homing shockwaves. You can dodge the homing shockwaves if you dodge at just the right time. I, I don't know. Like, you don't have to. There we go. She started uh, attacking me directly. You can also back her into a corner and uh, spin to win her. Like this. Oh, uh, I actually went underneath her, which was an accident. But she teleports away. So spinning to win against her is a lot less fun. Because she has a method to uh, teleport away from your attacks. She also summons clones of herself, as I'm sure you can tell by the fact that there's now more than one of her. And only the real one uh, 
Only the real one causes damage to her health bar, of course. It wouldn't make any sense if the fake ones, uh, you could hurt the fake ones to hurt her. Uh, she's really good at flipping around. Like, really good at it. Uh, but for some reason, while you're set on, uh, on dealing melee damage to her, instead of running away, she just starts flipping around, like, with the intent to dodge, instead of just putting distance between you. It would make more sense, uh, for her to try and focus on putting distance between you. Like, that's definitely a, a better means to survive. I'm not saying that it would make the boss fight better, it just seems weird, because you know she has the speed to put distance between you and her, and she just doesn't use it for some reason. I could see this boss irritating people as well. I don't think it's all that bad, though. Like, uh, you have the... You have plenty of methods to deal with there being like 50 of her, this being one of them. Uh, and you can spin uh, to get them away from you and deal damage to them. Uh, it is hard to find a place in time to use uh, target magic. Uh, I also think the purple mines she leaves around are kind of cool. Oh, she's already dead though. That wasn't like the most optimal run of that boss, but it uh it was it was good enough. Also, she's dead and she's going to blue hell now, where the blue fire, blue and white fire is. Blue and white hell. Look, they're over here. Ariel and Captain Dax too. Come now. Kai's forces have appeared as uh, what's next? Oh yeah, Raja these levels. Requested the party's uh, the... Destination, the levels in the canyon are next. Alright. I think it's time to equip the, uh... The attacks we're gonna be using for the end game. I gotta get the wind snipe back. Not wind snipe plus one, just wind snipe. Ah, uh, here we are. Okay. Uh. Yeah, sure. Defeat Kanga. He's one of the four evil mystics. Uh, I'm gonna, you watch this cutscene, I'll be right back. We'll attack from the left side. Led by Raja, our main forces are in the center. Kai is our main target. Time. Who is Ariel? Why can Ariel turn into a bird? I hear you ask. Uh, I'm using the wrong set of spells. That's alright, I'll remember to change it again. Uh, I'll remember to change it again when uh, when we're when we're out of this level. This set of spells isn't really the worst for this level, honestly. Do I still have the wind snipe at least? Yeah, okay. I'm not gonna need the wind snipe or anything, but I, I would prefer to have it, just in case. It's not like anything's gonna surprise me in this level. I played this game way too many times, I know exactly how to get to the exit. Uh, but... You know, if I ever feel like using a target attack, I would just like for the thing I want to come out of my, of my rod. I don't want any surprises. Man, Glacier would be really great right now. 
not as not a necessity, but really great. There's a lot of cannons in this level, by the way. Cannons knock you over, and unlike the archers, do do deal decent damage. You can roll through cannon explosions if you time your roll. And uh, one storm jump spell will kill a cannon. Uh, yeah, like that. Plus, there's a health refill right over uh, if I can get these guys off my back. It's a health refill right here. Let's just rain death down on these guys real quick. Yeah, yeah, your units are surrounded. You're all dying. I'm going to go fight the boss and the level will end, so your problems will be over shortly. Alright, boss time. Hey, Konga. So, Konga's gimmick, as a boss, is that he cannot be knocked over. At all. Not by, uh, not by magic. Not by, someone is blasting their music while driving through my neighborhood. Uh, not by magic. Not by, not by melee attacks. He just can't be knocked over. Uh, this actually makes him easier to kill. A lot easier, because you can just hit him constantly, and he has no defense against it. Like this. He doesn't get knocked over to make him hard. The enemies are flickering in and out of existence. There's too many of them. Uh, it can't keep up. But yeah, Kong is actually the easiest boss, easiest boss to fight beside Bruin, because he doesn't get knocked over, so you can just spin the win at him regardless of whether he's backed against a wall. Man, there were so many enemies. They were blinking out of existence. The game was struggling. Alright. Now, uh, this level has a counterpart with Shiga and Lonnie that is regrettable. It's fine if you're playing as Tyre Nausea. But if you're playing this level as Shiga or Lani, uh, this level is irritating. Because there's a boss that appears multiple times across the ascent, and you're supposed to fight him each time. Uh, otherwise, you will never finish him off. It's just programmed in such a strange way that uh, I'm not going to get into that you have to uh, fight him as you ascend. But on the Tyan Nausea path, which is the one we're on, instead, ah, fuck, instead, you can just go straight to the top and fight the boss there. The boss does appear multiple times along the way, but not only uh, is it a bad idea to fight him, but you can't fight him on your way up. You can't do it. It won't hurt him. And uh, this level's a bit of a maze as well. It's a bit hard to find your way to the top, but I know the way there because i played this game before. And uh, if you actually do, take the time to clear out all the enemies. And I, I didn't do what I promised and, uh, and equip the right spell, did I? I'm still using the wrong spell set. If you do take the time to clear out all of the enemies, then it actually does... Does it make things easier? It does make it easier to get to the top because you'll be able to follow your AI buddies. I didn't talk about these boar enemies, did I? The boar enemies are like Bruin in that they can charge with an aura around them. And when they charge with an aura around them, you can't knock them over or interrupt them in any way. Uh, Konga, on the other hand, is just incapable of being knocked over. You can totally still hit him. Unlike Bruin or uh, the Boars, which you cannot hit while they're charging with an aura, you can just hit Konga whenever you feel like, which, a as I was saying, is what makes him so easy to fight. Uh, hold on, it's getting a little crowded in here. Let's maybe rain some lightning down a few times. Yeah, now it's now it's a little more manageable. Look at all these stat ups. I'm getting a little confused as to which direction I'm going. Got a little turn around in this cave, but I think I know where I'm headed. 
Yeah, this way. All right. We're going the right way still, folks. Actually getting real close to the top. I think I just saw someone blink out of existence. I'm not 100% on that. Uh, there were definitely guys blinking out of existence during the last boss. But I think I saw one blink out just in front of me. And I'm not going to trust my own eyes on that. Because, uh be wrong you know I have a I don't know how you pronounce schizophrenia I'm gonna be honest even though I've been diagnosed with it I can't I, I no matter how many times people tell me how you pronounce it I I can never pronounce it right but I do have that mental disorder so you know maybe I just saw someone blinking out of existence where they weren't but the people were definitely blinking out of existence during that last boss fight with Konga. I'm absolutely positive about that much. Hey, Cannon. So this guy just, like, has a fuck ton of spells. That is his thing. That is what makes him formidable. And it's really hard to uh, pin him against a wall. Not because there aren't walls to pin him against, but because... A lot of, a lot of enemies that, that that have ganged up on me at this point. I think I got it though. Oh no, I got interrupted. You can get interrupted during your spin attack. It's hard, but you can. It's hard for enemies to do it, but they can. Oh, I got a good spin going again. Let's do it. Spin to win. All right. Spinning is the meta. We're making good progress. Going a lot faster than you're supposed to, that's for fucking sure. This game's probably fun to speedrun. Alright, time for a big boss. This this is one of those levels that's just the boss. I apologize for any of my nose noises you are hearing right now. But I am sick with nose problems. So part of me thinks that's to be... Uh, is he doing the thing where he's in the air? He's doing the thing where he's in the air. I don't like this thing he does where he's in the air. You just kind of have to dodge it for a while. And I don't like it. It's not like it's hard to dodge. It's just I, I don't, I'd rather he be down here fighting me. Yeah, there we go. Kai's not uh, particularly hard to fight. It's just that uh, you got to be patient is all. Because sometimes he'll just decide to use that attack where he fucks off into the sky like that again. And you can't really do anything about it except wait. To my knowledge... Uh, like, I'm trying to get a good beat on him with the wind snipe. Or hit him with anything, actually. Uh, but my impatience is just causing me to take more damage. Oh. Oh, we got a good spin going, folks. We got a classic spin going. Ah, oh, fuck! I turned the opposite direction. That's my bad. I didn't spin. I didn't spin right. That may that may sound like a joke, but no, I, there is like a technique to it. I like how everybody's gasping for breath, like that was the hardest fight of their lives. After I just stun locked him in the corner. Guys, enemy. It is a little bit harder to lock people into a spin with Ty. Because Ty's spin is slower, but it does deal more damage. It does deal a lot more damage. There is one character whose spin is so slow that you can't successfully lock them into a chain of repeatedly taking damage. 
and it's tragic. To rescue Dax and Ariel. Anyway, Dax and Ariel were kidnapped. Uh, remember Dax and Ariel? You've seen them. Do you know anything about them? No, you don't. You do not know anything about them. You ever. You never will. Oh, it's the catacombs. Uh, hold on, let me make sure my runes are set up right. Yeah. Uh, the catacombs have my fa Wait, let me double check. Yeah. Okay, the catacombs have my favorite music in the game. Uh, you're not going to be able to hear it very well. Uh, I have subtitles turned on, thankfully, so you can hear... Well, not hear, but see what the cutscenes are doing. But uh, it's hard to find a balance for live commentary between game audio and... Uh, speaking audio and most of the time it just comes out as the game being almost inaudible which is unfortunate but you know I I wanted something to do today that wasn't being miserable and I just got done playing through and rendering Mystic Heroes and then having an existential crisis Maybe I didn't want to work today. Maybe I wanted to do something that was productive, but also fun. And I'll worry about working shortly. Maria, are you not coming? I will stay to avenge. Still, uh, still. Oh, uh, hold on. I, I wish you didn't hear that beep sound. Uh, like that's not the worst thing in the world that you heard the beep of my phone. Telling me I have a message from someone. Uh, oh, the level started. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, this level's another maze. And this one... This one involves hitting switches. How's my controller charge doing? Uh, I'll, I, you know what? I don't want to check. I don't feel like checking. We hit switches to uh, open the door. We have to hit three switches for the door to open completely. These guys in night armor are the most uh, agile, normal enemies. They're like pretty tough to uh, to fight in melee combat, even while spinning because they can dodge around your spin, which a lot of the bosses are even incapable of. But they're completely vulnerable to magic. Give me all those. I, uh, I'm still having fun fighting the enemies, by the way. I know I'm running past most of them. But it's not like fighting the enemies is an inherently unfun experience or anything. It's enjoyable. It's just I I'm playing the way I want to play. And I think that's fine. Alright, switch number two. This game uh, seems a lot longer when you have to play through it twice. Once is each uh, character path. Someone driving through the neighborhood blasting their music again. It's, it's their right to do that. It only lasts like 10 seconds. Maybe if it lasted all day, I would have more reason to complain. But some people feel like being like, you know, asserting their existence. Like... They want other people to know they're alive, that they have feelings and tastes in music. And they want they want you to acknowledge it. And I don't mind. Give me a hand here. I'm coming. 
I, I no, I want the rune attack up. I see it right here. Did I even collect it? Yeah, I did. Okay. Get me around. Uh, this game actually got decent reviews when it came out. Uh, which may, may be surprising to hear. It wasn't like a critical darling or anything, but it did get decent reviews. And uh, people in general seem pretty keen on it. It didn't sell well. People seem to have forgotten it like a couple weeks after it was released. But it's not like it was hated or anything. If it came out today, People wouldn't like it. I can tell you that much. I think it still holds up, uh, but it's well known that I have a more lenient outlook on games than most individuals. Let's not let's not sugarcoat it. It is very well known that I uh, that I'm more generous toward games, and I like that about me. It's not something I would change about myself ever, but. It's still true. No, I'm gonna get stung. Okay, I didn't get stung like by the jellyfish. I was super worried that was a future I was looking at. Remember the brutes? Well, the brute. We fought back in the uh, Mystic Castle, I think is what that level was called. We're about to fight fucking four of them. Four. Not all at once, mind you, but still, right after right after the other. This is the introduction of the gimmick that uh, the Brutes have. Some of the brutes can only be hurt by magic. Some of them can only be hurt by uh, by physical attacks. And now we got to deal with that. That's our problem now. If we can single out which is which, though, that will make this a lot easier. Because if we get the one... It's physically weak. Trapped. We didn't get him trapped. Which is unfortunate. Uh... He may not be trapped, but we're making pretty good progress on fucking him up regardless. There we go, I got him. No, there should be another one that's come to life. Yeah, no, another one that's weak to only physical attacks. Ah, I didn't get him stuck in the corner. Getting them stuck in the corner is definitely ideal. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to use Glacier while I'm uh, getting knocked around. Damn it, I was so close. I got a little too greedy. This fight's definitely uh, one of the more interesting ones. It's just kind of an interesting dynamic having a having an enemy around that you can't hit with your magic. I think I got yeah I got both of the ones that were uh, I got both brutes that we we're uh, were invulnerable to magic. Now I can use magic on the remaining two.
Glacier still deals pretty decent damage against bosses. Not as not as uh, devastating as it is against normal enemies, but still. Also, we can still get a spell back, a spell meter back from attacking the the spell brutes with with our melee. It just won't deal damage. The melee won't. I mean, all right, there we go. That was pretty good. That fight could have gone better, but it wasn't the worst that fight's gone for me. Okay, uh... I'm... I would still really like if I could figure out how to disable some specific sounds and not others on my phone. I'm, I've am i almost never had my phone on before today. Like, I almost always turn it off as soon as I'm done with it. So nobody's ever able to reach me through my cell phone. Let's go, everyone. Let's fuck up those ghosts. Fuck up everyone in this hall. They weren't all fucked up. Let's try again. Still more people in the hall to fuck up. It's good to stay back and use spells in this particular hallway just because there's a bunch of arrows flying through the center. And you're going to want to dodge through the center. It's not ideal to fight in the center of this room. Maybe we didn't get hit by a single arrow. Kind of surprising. Alright, I think I remember the layout of this cavern pretty well, too. I think I know exactly where to fire my spell and where to where to turn. But we'll see. Just want to get rid of the ghosts. They're really, really obnoxious. There we go. Oh, there's more. I must have angered them with my glacier. I must have gone through a wall and hit one of them or something. Hey guys. I just want to hit this little... No. I just want to hit this little... No. I just want to hit this little switch up. No. I didn't. Okay, you know what? Let's... Everybody back off. Everybody just... Back off for a minute. I just want to use one spell on that. There we go, I hit it. Alright, we're good. That turns this bridge over here. And then there's one more switch I have to hit. Let's roll through this boulder, as one does when confronted with a boulder. That's the optimal solution. I fell in the pit. Oh, I got immediately knocked. I fell back in the pit. It's a roller coaster. Yeah, I imagine this game would be fun to speedrun. It's short. We're pretty near the end now. Uh, unfortunately, there are a couple bosses toward the end that I really think would... Uh, Hamper the uh, the speed at which people could finish. There we go. I hit the switch. Wow, we are we are surrounded. And the archers are relentless today. I I could I could fight all these guys. It would it wouldn't really be that big a deal. I think I'm going to fight him. Like, they asked for this, right? They asked for me to come in here and start raving on their asses with infinite magic, which means I can rave, and, and speed, which means I can rave so much harder and faster at unprecedented levels. I think that's good enough. I think I showed him what for. 
and I'm invincible. They asked for that. They didn't have to try and fight me. They could just let me pass. You ever notice uh, some of the- also more brutes. There's more brutes here. The brutes appear a lot. Uh, you ever notice some enemies just spontaneously coming back to life sometimes? Uh, there's these mage characters hanging around that do that. Hopefully I killed one of them in that clusterfuck. Oh, I'm invincible right now, and my magic is infinite, so I'm just gonna start doing this again. You know Juggernaut has the one tornado kick? Well, the Brutes have two tornadoes in a row. Oh yeah, I still have to kill the jellyfish regardless of whether I, uh, I succeeded at killing all of the other enemies. I kind of forgot the jellyfish were in here. You do have to kill all the enemies in this room. In this room, it's mandatory. The stage will not end until you kill everyone. It's very rare that that's a level condition that needs uh, addressed, but this is one of the few cases. I think that's all of them. No, one of the jellyfish is still moving. Alright, I think that's all of them, right? Yep, okay. Okay. Staying hydrated. Again, are you? Staying hydrated. You all right? Like, I'm absolutely sure you're not able to hear nearly any of the sounds in this video game. If you have headphones on, maybe you can hear some vague sounds in the background. Alright, this boss is a weird one. Uh, our friend Ariel is, uh, is being mind-controlled, and we can choose to fight her, and if we defeat her, we get a health pickup. But what we want to do stay really far away from everyone and only shoot magic at Arya and uh, get the fuck out of the way whenever Arya is about to shoot anything at us because her magic hurts a lot uh, it is possible to attack her physically it's not easy though I'm frozen Not that you needed me to tell you that. You could... Oh, God. Uh, that didn't juggle us for as long as it could have. Which I, I'm, I'm a fan of. I'm glad that, that that didn't fuck us up nearly as bad as it could have. Uh, we got her. We got her, folks. No spinning to win in that time. You're going to be all right. Too weak to continue. As the two injured ones head back to Mount Senkai, the spirit of the Dragon Star leads the others. Forward. All right, just two stages left: stage seven Mount and stage Kansan. eight. Hot... 
both of the both of the first parts of stage seven are more maze levels. This one's even a teleport maze. Which, as I understand it, is a uh, extra unliked. People have a particular unfondness for teleportation maze levels, but because I already know where to go, it's not a problem for me. If you didn't know where to go, I imagine it would be quite irritating. Alright, we gotta we gotta hit a switch again with our target magic. But that really depends on whether No, please stop hitting me. I just need to hit that. Did I get yeah, I got it, okay. Okay. Oh no, I went out. I don't wanna fight. I, I lied, I wanna fight a little. Ah, come on, let me use my spell. I know you have literally no- Yes, thank you. No incentive to stand still long enough for me to use it, but I just want to use it. Alright, and it's this teleporter behind me. And then we turn and go through here. Yep, okay, good. We made it. Alright, time for the uh, final battle with Griffin, who you may remember from earlier and still know nothing about. You're not really supposed to know anything about him, because you can't. He has no dialogue worth talking about in this game. He has a cool sword. Right, so Griffin's not really the problem. In this boss fight, the problem is this fucker, the go not golem, uh, juggernaut. The juggernaut is just running, uh, running defense, uh, so that way it's extra hard for you to kill Griffin, and it's really irritating. This golem, uh, not golem, juggernaut, but he's he's gone now. Uh, that's the hard part of the fight already over. Come on, yep, there we go. I, I spun the right way. It just took a minute. Come on, Griffin. Surrender to the spin. The spin is your friend, Griffin. I fucking spun wrong. Uh, but he, it's okay, we still got him on the ropes, don't worry. He's not gonna escape for long. I'm spinning the wrong way. It's... It's kind of hard to steer Ty spinning in the right direction. Uh, his spinning moves. A lot of the other characters, when you spin with them, they don't move. They stay stationary, which makes it a lot easier. But Ty is still my favorite character to play as, just because he deals the most damage. Uh, well, not the most damage. Uh, Nadja deals more melee damage, and Lonnie deals more magic damage, but he deals the most damage in both classes for... Uh, for someone who's useful in both. Like, if you pick Lonnie, you can say goodbye to melee damage, and if you pick Nausea, you can say goodbye to magic damage. Ty's good at both. Ah, I keep spinning the wrong direction. Oh, we got him. All right, uh, <clears throat> what's next? What do we got up ahead? It's the tower level. You know what the tower level is? It's another, it's another maze. Oh wait, no, this part of the tower isn't a maze, actually. This one's just, uh, this one's pretty straightforward. Unless we get knocked off. If we get knocked off the, the ledge, I'm not going to be happy. Getting knocked off the ledge is a very real and present danger.
Uh, and then there's another uh, place where we can get knocked down when we actually get inside the tower. But I'm going to do my best to avoid that outcome. All right, fine. You guys don't want me to use my cool magic on you. I just, I'll just jump past you. We don't, we don't have to, we don't have to do the thing where I use my cool spell to destroy you. Uh, I might up here though. It's getting a little crowded in this building, but we'll see. Uh, all right, make the jump, please. Oh fuck! I got knocked back. Something awful. I should have seen that outcome coming. Uh, and now the level's gonna 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 be a bit because now everybody's gonna follow us through the hole and it's a whole thing a whole thing if you will I thought for sure I would have been interrupted enough to use glacier there but there was just an archer kind of camping thanks I wanted my max health increase I worked hard for it All right, back up we go. So it's a bit of a ride to get back. Yeah, uh, the punishment for failing that platforming is pretty steep. Like I'm not even fighting the enemies and it's it's gonna take a while to get back. But it, if you fight the enemies, it takes longer, so much longer. The punishment is massive. Oh man, look at this. I am, I am getting camped. Jump, make the jump, oh God. Oof. This is what happens when you fail the platforming in this level. Full disclosure, uh, this happened during the long play and I cut I cut that run out and replaced it with a better one because uh, this would not have been fun to watch in a long play. It is funny, I think, to see this outcome. It's not great. Yeah, there we go. Look at how many of them I fucked up. And there's still more. There's so many more. Look at how many more there are. This is what you get for failing the platforming challenge, you fucking cretin. Is it cretin? I think it's cretin. And I just started saying cretin because I've, I've, uh... Is it cretin or cretin? Oh my god, I cannot believe I'm having this argument with myself. Internally, of course. If I was having the argument with myself out loud, uh... Be back a few months. I just want to use Glacier again. I know it's unlikely given how surrounded I am right now. Fine. If you think this mass of enemies is a lot, by the way, this is nothing compared to the final stage in survival mode. The final stage in survival mode just floods the screen. The enemies can platform, by the way, and they're not shy about it. They will follow me up here. Successfully. Please don't knock me off. But yeah, the run where that happened in, uh... In the long play. I cut that out. Because I could not have sh shown that. I could not have shown me fucking around like that. It would have not it would not have been fun to watch. Strangely enough, there are people uh, that comment on the long play channel and ask for all the mistakes to be included. Uh, the number of people that want that is really small, thankfully, because even if everybody wanted that, there's no way I could show it in good conscience because it's just bad content. Like, if there's no voice over someone failing something over and over, it's not, it's not, you can't justify leaving it in. There's no content there anymore. Is not an option. Like, if you, if you see someone fail over and over, and they're providing commentary as they're failing over and over, 
I think there's a precedent there uh, for, for that being entertaining. A lot of people, a lot of people, come to watch people fail and overcome failure and hear their thoughts. But watching people overcome the failure is kind of meaningless if you don't know how they feel during all of it. Like, you gotta set some stakes. Like, who is this person? Why should I care if they succeed or fail? And if you don't set those stakes, then the failure doesn't mean anything. This is another maze level with a puzzle. The puzzle is we gotta go outside the tower. Which is where we are now. And find these little ornaments and smash them. This took me ages to figure out as a kid. Uh, because there were no uh, good walkthroughs for this game. Uh, almost no one played it. I had to figure out as a kid that uh, you're supposed to bust outside and destroy those little ornaments hanging out down there. Uh, here's the second wall we're supposed to bust down. It's kind of hard when we're getting surrounded by enemies, but I'll, I'll do it. I'll manage it. There it is. All right, now there's only one more to one more of those ornaments to bust. Come on, let me in. I I'm getting fucking camped. Like this is some next level camping I'm experiencing right now. One of the enemies went out of the spawn zone. I didn't know they could do that. Does that mean if I leave, they'll be out here now? Yes. I can't believe enemies transition spawn zones. I didn't know they could. I didn't even know that was possible. Anyway, uh... There's only one more, but it's really well hidden. It's hidden in a real nasty spot. And even after I figured out you have to break the ornaments as a kid, this took me so long to find the last ornament. Because unlike the other two, it's uh, it's hidden down here. No, I fell. Ugh. It's hidden underneath a crumbling platform. You have to fall onto the ledge in just the right way. Or maybe we could use magic to bust it, but I think falling onto the ledge is the safer way to go. Come on, let me, let me hit it. Please, no! Why? Why did my auto target send me all the way to the bottom? Oh, this is no good. Uh, Ty's auto target on his attack. I think I said one of the very first things I said when I started this video is that your character's uh, melee has an auto target on it and will leap toward the nearest enemy. Uh, and he auto-targeted something, and it took him all the way down to the bottom floor. I got scared. The camera went outside of the building. I think that's cause to be scared. I think it's reasonable to be a little nervous in that circumstance. We're getting stunlocked by the jellyfish. Yeah, that last, uh, that last pathway to outside is, is well hidden. Not necessarily in a fashion I would consider fair or fun to reach. We're getting there, though. We're climbing back up. And I'm hoping we don't, uh... We don't crumble. All the way to hell again. Uh, this is, like, the last proper level in the game, though. Like, after this, the game's pretty much done. It's all boss rush from here. All boss rush. Alright, here it is. I got it. At least I broke the pathway. I wasn't able to land in the pathway, but at least I broke it. That's good. Yeah, all right. Gotta break the last ornament. 
and then we'll, we will begin the end game boss rush. So if we were to touch that blue floor, uh, that would have teleported us all the way back to the bottom of the staircase. That's what that blue floor would have done. And the blue floor is directly before the exit. I think it's unlikely I'm going to be able to platform my way out of this. Yep. I've done it before, though. Just, uh, wasn't... I am so... I, they were standing in just the right spot to prevent me from climbing up that. But hey, we're almost at the end of Mystic Heroes. Do I really want to fight? Uh, some of the bosses in the boss rush? No, not really. Not really. But we're, we're pretty close to the end now, so it would be a shame to quit. Sorry, Gate to the Dragon Underworld is what we're talking about now. Alright, time to fight Emperor Kang. This boss probably frustrated a whole hell of a lot of people. Uh, his whole thing is that he blasts you all over the stage and he's really irritating. That's, that's just his thing. And this is how you fight him. Very similar to Arya. Except, uh, he seems to be getting fucked extra hard. Uh, I wanted to give him a bop on the head. You can do that. He is... You can hit him with melee attacks. It's just... It's just hard. As you might expect with him floating and all. You can even, uh... You can even spin to win him. Uh, you can, uh push him up against a wall and stunlock him with spin attacks. It's just, uh, as one might expect, a little challenging. Yeah, this uh, getting knocked all over the stage is probably why people don't like this boss fight so much, if I had to guess. He's almost dead now, though. Oh, I think we got him. Yeah, we got him. We got him good. All right, time for my favorite cutscene. You, you will not defeat me. Son, come forth! Huh? That doesn't look like Cyrus. I give you the power of the Dragon Orb. Now we can fight together! What? What are you doing? Drawing your fear to the orb is the only way to achieve ultimate power. Be afraid. So much power. 
Cyrus, his own father. That child is no longer a human being. He has no soul. What's going on? Look out! Get out of here! <gasps> ah! Bonnie! Oh. Ah! The acting in this game is pretty suboptimal. Uh, but I really, really like the way that Emperor King and Cyrus delivered their lines in that particular, uh, in that particular, uh, cutscene. Because even though it was still really bad delivery, it was over the top in such a way as to be extremely entertaining. So, it's time to finally fight The Rock. I don't really like The Rock as a boss fight. I think he was more entertaining than the Karras and Crash combo we got. Uh, but, my problem with The Rock is solely that it has way too much health. This is the first video game, or any fictional media actually, now that I'm thinking about it, to introduce me to The Rock as a concept. Like, just a giant, terrifying, mythological bird monster. This was the first piece of media to, to bring this to my attention. And you can't hit it with melee. That's just not going to work. Like, it's surrounded by lava. We can get up there if you want, though. Like if, like, if you really want to get close, I can get up there to show you why it's not a good idea. Come on, we're almost there. Yeah. We can get up here and do this to it. It's just not optimal. It's much slower. But like, if you really wanted to play the fight this way... <laughs> It's an option that is open to you. And because we're spinning, we can't, like, get hit by the lava. Oh, he, he flew. And I was going to dive back in here. Yep, there he goes. He's going to land over here. So he fires, uh, he fires blasts in rhythm, and you can dodge roll them and then counterattack when he's done, or you can just hide behind a rock, not 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 a bird rock, but the rock kind of rock. And again, if you really want to, doing this is an option. He doesn't really have any defense against this or anything. And it's a way to get your spell meter back. It just makes the fight take longer to do this. Oh, he's, he's gone. He's leaving. Where's he going to land this time? Oh, over here? That's not too bad. But yeah, how I normally play this fight is I get behind a rock. Which doesn't stop the meteors raining from the sky. But it does stop the fire that the rock is actually shooting at you itself. While I'm pretty sure strikes to its head with your magic deal the most damage, uh, its head moves a lot because it, it likes to breathe fire. So even though the wind snipe homes in, it's it's not guaranteed that your attack is going to find its target. 
you know? Oh, it's it's all the way over there. It's really far. It's really far away. Yeah, this fight just I, I just don't think it's particularly fun. It's not it's not the worst, but like the hiding behind a rock and slowly taking your time to snipe uh mechanic that that seems most functional against it. It's not fun to do. Did I feel like I solved a puzzle and that I that I figured out the optimal way to not get destroyed when I learned that you could just hide behind rocks and snipe at it? Yeah. But I feel like the puzzle took too long. Did I win? Alright, it's over. That took longer than normal and I got a lot more hurt than normal, but... I just wanted to maybe demonstrate the reasons why I don't think it's such a great boss. And it's not as exciting against uh, as that fight against the giant tiger either. The giant tiger is kind of terrifying. It's half rotted. It's a zombie. And it didn't have as much health. Didn't being the key word here. Because we have another boss fight in this boss rush. And it's the tiger. Again. And you might be thinking, but we already fought the tiger. Why does it get its own boss stage a second time? That makes no sense. Well, uh, it's bigger. It's a lot bigger now. Like, way bigger. And that's most of it, honestly. Uh, it's bigger, it has more health now, and that's it. Uh, also lightning rains from the sky and fucks you up, but like that's a non-threat. It's like the meteors in the other in the other fight that we just did with the rock. It's like, uh, hello? Why are you running away? I thought we were fighting. Yeah, the lightning is in the is like the meteors in the rock fight. You can just kind of ignore them. All of the damage is really going to come from the boss itself. You can reasonably dodge the lightning if you want, though. Unlike the meteors. Like, I don't know. I just don't... Like, I don't think it's super fun refighting these two bosses in a slightly harder very slightly harder context than last time. As a kid, I did think it was really grotesque. The way uh, the Taishan had like its rib cage open and you could see its disgusting organs. Also, this level is kind of scary to look at. Like, as a kid, for sure, this level gave me the heebie-jeebies. Like, uh, Taishan, however you pronounce that, already scared me a little as a kid, because it's a giant, rotting, magical tiger. But now it's even bigger, and it's dark. So that, that makes it extra scary. See, I think it would have been cool if what happened instead was uh, the characters got to fight the big bosses they missed. Like, the rock is a big boss that Ty missed earlier. Uh, and 
Taishan, the original, the first Taishan fight, is not a fight that Shika and Lonnie get to have. So during this boss rush, I thought it would be cool if uh, Tai gets to fight the rock uh, and uh, the dragon, and Shika gets to fight Taishan and, I don't know, something else. But no, no matter what, you just fight Rock and Taishan during this boss rush. Which I, I don't like as much. How you doing, by the way? You following what's going on in the story so far? Because I'm not. Uh... Alright, this fight's genuinely uh, still pretty challenging for me, even after playing the game so much. Everything else about the game I feel like I know enough about to... Gen generally just succeed at everything, but this in particular, this fight, still gives me some trouble sometimes. Also, the wind snipe is really uh, recommended to be equipped at all times uh, during the boss rush. Uh, Cyrus teleports everywhere, uh, he rains projectiles from the sky, he's just generally annoying, he can teleport. He can make multiples of himself just like his mom. I really only figure out where he is at any given time by looking at the minimap. And, uh, you can fight him with melee if you really want to. You gotta get real good at aiming your target spell for this fight. Yeah, if you really, really want to want to fight him with melee, it's an option. You can do it. You just have to wait for him to come down from his perches and, uh... And, and, and uh, try to get the upper hand on his wacky movements. His wacky slip sliding and teleporting and what oh there's there they are there's the multiple cyruses i've come to know and love thankfully we have a spinning invincibility on our side oh he he just he teleported away after he got knocked over which is the sensible thing to do but i wanted to i wanted to I wanted to trap him. You can trap him against the wall and spin him to death, just like the other bosses. Uh, most of the other bosses, it's just hard because he he maneuvers. He, manu he don't hold still. Is the words that I'm trying to come make come out of my mouth. He don't hold still. Oh, we got him. All right, you ready for some shit? I am invincible! So how do you feel about that thing? Because that's the final boss is this thing, this horrifying monstrosity, this formless monster that must have come from someone's nightmares or something because it looks, it, it doesn't look anything like someone, something someone could have come up with uh, elsewise. Like what am I even looking at? 
It looks like one of the giant bug monsters from Jet Force Gemini got fused with some rotting, uh, rotting trees and, uh, and was in the middle of being autopsied when it was, when it was called for its boss fight duties. Like, holy shit, the design of this creature. Something else. Anyway, it has uh, very predictable sets of patterns and attacks. Uh, I think it's a really fun boss, but meleeing it is a lost cause. Like, it's just not practical to try and melee this boss. You can get a couple hits in here and there, but it's, it's not worth it. It has multiple faces, uh, phases, not faces. It's huge, it's intimidating. I don't know where we are right now. Uh, reality is cracking around us. I was hoping he would do a different attack. Uh, no, please stop doing the attacks where you go underground. I can't hit you while you do those. Which is a good reason you should do them in universe, but you should stop doing them uh, for my purposes. Ah, there we go. I got a melee attack in. Oh, you going back underground, huh? You, you doing that again, I guess? There you go. At least the hand swipe doesn't put you on... Uh, another hand swipe? At least the hand swipe doesn't put you underground. Is that a hand? Is is that what we're calling that thing, by the way? I'm unclear if that's a hand I'm looking at. Because, oh my god, look at you. Hey, you just want to keep using the really easy to dodge melee attacks you've got. Uh, I'm not going to complain none. Uh, I just feel like there's a fine balance between trying too hard and not trying hard at all. Like, earlier you were trying too hard, you see, because you were only using attacks where you went underground, and I couldn't hit you. Uh, but now it feels like you're not trying at all. Which is the which is the opposite of my previous complaint. But it's too far in the opposite direction. Is your AI broken? Why are you only... Okay, thank god, you started doing the attack where you summon these... Oh, and you're done with it already? Okay, no, they're back. And they're gone again already? What, what, what is, what's deciding which attacks you use? I'm so confused. Like, keep the freaky Beyblades around slightly longer than that. They didn't even have the chance to come to me. Alright, it's time for the, uh, the hardest and the easiest phase. In this phase, he'll charge up a massive fucking really powerful... Uh, he's supposed to, anyway. Uh, charge up a massive, really powerful shockwave. Which can utterly fuck you up, because it will home in on you. Uh, there are more than one of the shockwave, and it deals massive damage. But you can interrupt it if you hit him with your target spell while he's charging it. And as long as you get a good rhythm going, like I have here, where you interrupt him shortly after he starts charging, you'll kill this phase in no time, and it won't be a threat. Alright, final phase time. This is the weirdest phase. It's where the... the balls come off. at least finish him with a Busto attack if we can. Uh, we can't, though. Oh, we did. We did it. Alright. Uh, final boss defeated. Game conquered pretty much exactly in three hours. That's what I predict... how long I predicted this would take. Alright, enjoy the cutscene.
in your debt. Now I can finally return home. Where is your home? See that star? Oh, you came from the sky. Take care. Don't get lost. Alright, so there's still a little bit more, but uh, that was Mystic Heroes. Uh, one of the story paths, at least. I'm not recording the other one. I showed you some bits from the other path I liked, but I'm not recording all of the other path. Most of the levels are the same between the two paths, except there's a few boss fight differences. And this part of the ending is different. Uh, like, he, he talks about revenge during Ty's ending, and during Shiga and Lonnie's ending, he talks about mysterious power, and what I can only assume is a translation issue. But, this is, a uh, that was Mystic Heroes. I like it. I think it's a fun game. I'm glad I, w I had enough to talk about for its entire duration. I was worried I wouldn't. And, uh, it gave me something to do while I'm while I'm worried about about stuff. So it's good for that too. All right, see you guys around.